Hello, my name is V Sin, and this is the Destiny of Spirits closed beta. Um, this was originally opened originally opened up one week ago on Thursday, the twenty fourth of October, twenty thirteen. Um, it, the beta was kind of weird with its opening. It was, like it came out in Europe and Japan for PS Plus, but Europe apparently could only u access it. If they connected it through a PS3 and then the US finally got beta keys, it's a bit mucky. But eventually I managed to get my hands on one of the American keys. Um, I also managed to get it through my Japanese PlayStation Plus, because I have a Japanese account as well. Um, so I've been doing a few things like self-trading and stuff. But first of all, what the heck is this in the first place? This is supposed to be a bit of an MMO. It's enti so far it's entirely PvE based, you, you basically beat up monsters, you get to a boss, you beat up the boss, you free an area, you move on to the next area. That's the fundamental. So first of all, let's do the boring thing, options. And now, oh, just for the record, I believe this game needs to make calls to the server every single time you need to do something. Um, it's more, I mean, when it actually makes a call to the server, you'll see a little bit of a, a little wireless symbol in the middle of the screen, but this here, um, I believe it's just loading times. So Eula, I'm not going to show you the end user license agreement, <laughs> that's just a wall of text. Audio settings, you do have separate sliders for music and sound effects. Um, I will say that the defaults seem to be okay. Um... Sound effects aren't actually super loud anyways, and when they do override the music, I think they're just fine. What I will say about music though, um, you can hear the tune going on in the background. That is the tune for Blessing, and I'll have to go into that in a bit later. But the different, um, I believe it's Bad Luck, Super un Bad Luck, Unlucky, uh, Normal, Blessing, Great Blessing. Those all seem to have different mu sets of music, because I've been bouncing between my two accounts and I've been able to check it out. It does actually change the background music, which is nice. Um, there's also search. You go enter online ID. It's slightly misleading. Online ID is actually the PSN name, not the Destiny of Spirits name. Because in my Destiny of Spirits name is V Sin, but my online ID is my PSN account Eldracity. So if you wanted to look me up, you have to look up Eldracity, not V Sin. Just a quick note about that. Change name, you can also just change your name straight up. Um, I'm not going to do that. Also, this was present in the Japanese version, but not present in the North American version. I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be, but there's supposed to be an option in the bottom left-hand corner. And I believe it's something like news or something. It is actually in the Asia client. Japanese version, Asia client. Um, I don't know. We'll have to figure out what that is later. Maybe it'll add it into the international, to the North Amer, to the American. Yes, actually, just American, um, American client sometime in the future. I don't know if they will, but we'll have to see then. Let's get out of there. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. All right. Um, let's take a look at Hunt first. Hunt is entirely based around location data. You can see right now it's acquiring location information. What it does is depending on how far you move, um, this the system will eventually say, okay, you move this far, you will get this many spirits. Um, I will say that it's dependent on Wi-Fi location. I haven't tried to game it with something like a proxy, so I don't know if that works. But you actually have to go to a different location, connect to Wi-Fi, um, and then do that. If you have a 3D, 3G Vita, I believe that you can just use the 3G to get your location data. Um, however, I will say this, I tried connecting this to my college network, to a college network that blocks video game ports, and I cannot connect to the game, so I cannot access the hunt. I don't know if they just like need to change ports for Destiny of Spirits, or if they need to find, like, I, d I don't, I don't know, maybe Nier works on port-blocked networks. Maybe if they can 
call near and say near has this person moved yes this person has moved and then integrate it with near instead of trying to integrate it into the client because otherwise uh, there are quite a few people who say have to go to and from school to and from secure work networks um and stuff like that and they're gonna lose out on the hunting feature unless they go to say a coffee shop or something so i don't know hunt i've got no acquirable spirits but basically what you do is you press hunt go on a hunt for spirits it calls the server, you see this little cutscene. And then if it, you get any spirits, they all show up as a bunch of icons and you just pick them up. Let's get out of here. Load times. I don't think they're too bad, but they could be better. Uh, next one. Summon. Let's summon a bunch of spirits. Did I accidentally press ranking? Let's see. Okay, good. I did press summon. One of the small things about the interface is that it's entirely touch driven. There are no, con none of the Vita controls are used at all, except for of course the, except for of course the home button. But still, um, and on just on the main menu, from time to time, you will accidentally hit the same button because it's not clearly defined where each button begins and ends, as well as the fact that they're they are literally wedged together, with almost no space in between them. So. I don't know, maybe they need to work on the clarity of the buttons, because I've actually been mispressing repeatedly. So, here you go. You have summonable, Summon, Advanced Summon, Rare Summon Gravity Rush, and Rare Summon Doko Demo Isio. Or however you pronounce that. Um, you can see that at the bottom of Advanced Summon and Gravity Rush Summon, you can see Summon 30 and then that little sphere thing. That is supposed to be the cash shop currency of this game. Um, let me just quickly go over to the Doko Demo Isho, because I want to quickly talk about Pay to Win, just really quickly. So, I'm going to tap the Summonable Spirits line. Here you go. Now, why am I bringing this up? Bottom left-hand corner, you see that Kuro, the, the one for Domo's Friend Club. Kuro, News Tester Kuro, and I believe Kuro as well. Both of them, I would consider to be overpowered. Like, ridiculously overpowered. The active is 85% counter for 10 hits. The passive is plus 45% attack. Consider this. Several other things with counter, it's like 30% counter for 3 hits, or like 50% counter for 5 hits. This guy, for a cost that is rare, not, not super rare, has 85% counter for 10 hits and 45% attack, when a super rare has 30% element specific attack. Yeah. Now, it, this one is mostly broken. If you look at the gravity rush though, the gravity rush spirits are not as broken. Like for example, the super rare at the bottom, I do have, what the hell is she called? Lady of the Depths. Um, I have her in my collection, I'll show you how that goes, but she has far more balanced stats. I think it's just the one summon that's overpowered, they will have to tune that in the future, or it will be pay to win. I will say that. Advanced summon and summon, they do both have completely separate sum um, spirit pools. Additionally, depending on the, the client version, you will have different summons and advanced summons. So advanced summons for the Asia client are completely different from advanced summons for the American client, as you can see in the top left corner. However, let's go into summon, summon noble spirits for summon. Wait for that to load. Do, 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 do. There we go. Now you can see a whole bunch of commons, uncommons. Let's go all the way down to here. So let's see. Top right corner, one from the right as well as middle row, one from the left. Those two are world bosses. Those appear to be completely dependent on location, or at least location on the world map in the game. Because, again, I looked at both Asia Client and this one, and the, bo the boss Gunslinger, the, the yellow one with a cowboy hat near the center of the screen, that guy is present in both the Asia client and the American client in the same location. So it the world map is consistent, but your home base is based upon your location data. I'll have to go into that later. 
Um, otherwise, you can see this is a whole bunch of commons. Again, this is completely different from the Asia version, except for those extra summons. Let's get out of here. And we're just going to summon a bunch of them. So you press the summon button. Okay, once spent, cannot be refunded. Get this cutscene. You do get that pop-up in the top right corner that says, Hey, it's in common. And then you say, okay, Phantom of Gold. You can also tap on the center of it to see what the heck this spirit is. Checkmate rages attack by 100% when HP is 20% or lower, etc. And you can also press continue summoning. It just automatically spends the points. There you go, Chupacabra. Also, if you, you can just tap the middle of the screen during that cutscene and it'll skip it, which is nice. And quickly summon a bit. That's Carbuncle, a common, Undine. I like Undine. Yeah, there we go. You have all those spirits. Let's get out of here. Do, 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 do. All right, now on to... We're going to skip ranking. Basically, ranking is just... you. When you do battles, you get a set number of battle points. Um, ranking just shows who has the most battle points. That's about it. Um, you can also compare yourself with fr people on your in-game friends list, which, uh, let me make it clear, the in-game friends list is completely separate from the PSN friends list. You do not have- your PSN friends will not be automatically added to your Destiny of Spirits friends list, and people you add to your Destiny of Spirits friends list will not show up as on your PSN friends list. Just setting that aside. Let's go into Spirits now. We'll do a bit of setup, and then we'll get into some, into some fighting. So you can see this is my spirit collection. Um, you can also see a bunch of few status here. So first of all, let me just rearrange this. You see, you can rearrange based on element. Elements is show all, show this specific element. What I don't like is that you can't show multiple elements at the same time. It just toggles the element. And it'll only show one element or all of them, which is annoying. Order low to high, high to low. This, you can only sort it this way. I wish you could sort this by element, though. I'm just saying. Because I have quite a few, I have two element-based combos so far in my spirits, and I would love to just see all of the elements in the same slot. But whatever, I'll just leave it like that. I'm gonna set it to obtain rarity. Oh right, I forgot. I traded. I merged Lady of the Depths because I couldn't actually use her. Okay, whatever. Um, so you can see I have the super rare over here. First Mother, level 23, nice stats. Primal Beat, again, the support skill is 30% element specific. Mitochondrial Eve is similar to three times some of the three times attacks um, actives, but it does have the bonus of actually making use of various different monsters. Like, for example, if you have a level 1 First Mother and like a level 70, I don't know, Phoenix or something then you can make the phoenix attack using the mitoc mitochondrial eve which is pretty nice it's a fun gimmick i don't know if it's actually any better than anything else now um, you can see i have this rare now for status symbols the one next to first mother this guy black body i'm trying to trade it for something else if you're if a spirit is occupied in a trade you'll get that blacked out um you cannot use it in the party or anything like that um you can see Power up. Power up is based on your blessing. Uh, I should probably go do that before we fight. But blessing is dependent on the day. Um, the day resets at z z o o o o u t c. That means basically um, when the dateline hits midnight, when the uh, international dateline hits midnight, then the bl then your your what the hell? Your destiny. It's called your destiny. Um, it, it's basically a blessing plus element type. Your destiny resets. Um, you get daily rewards. You get to do a whole bunch of other stuff. Which I can't really show you because it's already past UTC. But, essentially, this element, the element of those two creatures with power up over them matches my, des my today's destiny. So they get a slight power boost. Is it listed here? No, it just shows that icon. What I will say though is that this interface will actually lag if you have too many creatures, too many creatures, too many spirits who have the power up I icon over them. I'm um, gonna also see on the right here, Huapo. I traded that this um, spirit from the Asia version. A um, note of, is that some of these creatures do have featured artists, like for example, Melina, Phantom of Gold, um, Spy Costume Raven. These are all done by Sony, but this. Like Chernobog, for example, is done by Peter 
Vix, Vix. I can't pronounce European names, I'm sorry. Um, you can see though that the illustration is done by a commissioned artist. Um, and let's go. Huapo is done by Halloween. Um, I believe he's on Pixiv or something. Uh, this one I got accidentally got the spirit KO'd. So you can see over time it revives. Um, if the spirit gets completely KO'd, then it takes 30 minutes in real time to revive the spirit, and then afterwards it takes a certain amount of time to regenerate the health after that. I have noticed a bug though, where if you leave your Vita in standby while the HP is regenerating, it'll regenerate very slowly, but as soon as you re-log your account, it will suddenly jump all the way back to full for some reason. I don't know why. Anyways, back to status icons. You can see that Huapo is flashing red and has that broken heart icon. That means they are KO'd and are waiting to resurrect. That's about it. Um, so let's do some merging first. You can see base spirit and enhancer spirits. Um, for some reason this bar appears as completely white when it starts off, but you tap the b middle of the black circle and get all your spirits. Uh, who do I want to merge? Let's attack if you want to undine. So you go undine. And you get your enhancer spirits. You don't have to tap these one by one. What you actually just do is just tap one, two, three. I only want to merge. Oh, yeah, right. This guy over here as well. There you go. Merge those four. Um, for merging, you get. I believe the amount of XP you get is increased by level of the spirit you merge, rarity of the spirit you merge, element if it matches the element of the spirit that you are merging into. As well as if the spirit is a is the exact same spirit, for example, I'm merging an Undine into an Undine, then there is another EXP bonus associated with that. Um, also, the merge button on the right, you can see it has that cost. If I'm not mistaken, the cost is based on 90 plus 10 times the level of your spirit for each individual enhancer spirit. So let me see if I got this right. A three... 32, and then subtract th 320, subtract 90, so yep, that appears to be the formula. I could be wrong though because there ha I haven't seen an official statement on it. You press merge, it destroys the other spirits, but you, the, your main spirit gains EXP. This is the only way you can gain EXP for spirits, fighting more does not do it, although occasionally some spirits will quote unquote drop, and then you can use those as it goes. So there you go. Hit merge. Get this nice little cutscene. This cutscene you can't actually skip, by the way. I've tried. There you go. The XP bar goes up. I got one level out of it. You see view status. You see, okay, I gained one level, 23 HP, 8 attack, 9 speed. Nice. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's go to party. Ah, uh, crap. I forgot those guys got beat up. Alright, so we're gonna just hit, hit reset. Um, the reset button's a little bit weird here, because when you do it in the party window, your primary will sit there, but if you do it in the battle preparation screen, then it'll actually completely wipe it. Now this is blue body, I like him because he has tons of defense. Let's use a pretty combo though, so we'll put in Undine. And what you see is the battle skill and the support skill. Battle skill is just you consume SP, you can do it, doesn't matter what position you put him in. Support skill though, they have to be in the leadership slot in order to activate it. So here you go. This is my combo. Undine. Um, I'm using Spy Costume Raven. This is again a uh, crossover from Gravity Rush. Um, use it for Ruby U battle skill. Extra speed. And then for cost, just toss in Melina. Because hey, you hey, know it. Melina's lore... Ran complete side note, but Melina's lore is really weird. She... It's basically she got raped by her brother and ran away and became the sun. Then her brother chased after her and became the moon. Eh? Like, I don't know. Oh well, Canada represent. And just toss that guy in to fill it out. So let's get into a fight here. First of all, um... Basically for everything though, you just tap the icon and you can see the information on it. So tap blessing in there. The, today's element is metal. Metal spirits are more likely to appear in summonings and hunts and their attacks and speed will go up. Today's fortune is blessing. There will be a maximum of 35 people on your on your list of highly compatible players. That one is you can just toss out friend invites to random people. It doesn't really do that much. Um, battles light and dark spirits will be evenly matched. That require in order for it to not be evenly matched, you either need great blessing or 
whatever the dark version is. Great Blessing enhances light versus dark. The opposite version enhances dark versus light. Uh, summoning storms are more likely to appear. That's just the status. And support attacks you make for friends will do a double combo. Double combo is just multiple taps or something. I'm not 100% sure. You can also change your fortune using the real money currency, but I, which I won't do. So let's get into a fight here. This location. Yay, middle of the Pacific Ocean. So let's see here. Tap on that icon over there. Uh, actually, I don't want to get into this because I want to use my water combo. Um, there's there's also an elemental wheel. Uh, Earth counters water, and they're all water, so let's try a different location. Please give me some fire. Ah, oh, great. Middle fire. Okay, that's good enough. Let's get into battle. So you get into, again, form party. You If you press the reset button here, it completely resets it. Resets it. it doesn't do so in... The other screen, so let's res let's put the party back together. Do actually, you know what? Let's show off this. Select supporters. Supporters are based on people in your friends list and random people. Basically, you can summon someone else's spirit into your battle to use for the duration of it. Let's see, this Asian player is a super rare. Tap on it. Azure Dragon, Chinese myth and folklore. Um, races attack of water spirits. Um, I've noticed that supporters will automatically get their support skill if you summon them in. However, I've noticed that if you have more than two spirits, it will randomly replace you either your second or third spirit. And in the case of combos, it can completely break combos. So, I don't know. I think they need to find a way around that. To either consistently say, the support spirit will always replace this slot. Or say, um let you swap spirits in and out of battle as the battle progresses. Um, you'll also notice the little cost icon just below the SR and water droplet. Normally, um, parties are capped by cost, but if you use support spirits, you can actually go ridiculously over your cost limit. Like, you see this is cost 4.5. If I wanted to, I could slot and say a cost 4, a cost 4.5, bring in another cost 4.5, and then I have a party with 13 cost. Which is pretty ridiculous. Then we're going to start with this. It'll also consume your spirit points, the blue currency. Here we go, get into a battle. And I'll show you what I think of it, as well as some of my bugbears with the system. So you see, you can go in here. Uh, let's see, where do we want to focus down? Actually, wait, he's just going to get one shot. Yep. So you can tap on the spirit and make them change targets. What you can also do is... You tap on the spirit, you see that this character has the Ruby U special ability. Increase, raise the speed by 35% for each water spirit. Um, it will consume a certain amount from the SP bar. If you can look really closely at the glowing bit, that's how much you will lose. Um, you are capped at 100 SP per entire battle. And the reason why this is important, I will show you in a second. So, cast, tap that. You see it shows the... Uh, Highlights the areas that you have to cast this on allies. You cast this on allies. You get that little thing. You cast it on an ally. Now you'll notice that, of course, I don't have enough SP for that. I don't have enough SP for that. I don't have enough SP for that. What do I do for the rest of the battle? Nothing. It's not too bad when it's these smaller scale battles against weaker creatures. You know, because they're all dying in like one, hit, one or two hits. But you can see that... It's not very involved, and immediately after this, I'm going to show you a raid boss with a different combo, but... Okay, so there you go. Also, that creature, when it dies, you can see that it becomes that icon, goes into the top corner, and you, know, you get that as a bonus creature. There you go, load in, battle ends. There you go, some reward for completion, drop by spirits is just randomly, when you down a spirit, you can get bonuses. Um, you can also tap this, and then yay, this is a gremlin, whatever. Let's get out of there. Because when it comes to involvement, I'm going to show you the raid event. The raid event is something that showed up on like the second day of the beta. Um, I don't know if they're going to bring in anything more later. But okay, let's, I'm going to skip how to play. Let's look at conquest info for a second. So you have defeated 23 raid bosses. For Depending on the number of raid bosses you beat, you get more levels. On conquest level, I've beaten Odin level 3, Vampire level 9, Hattori Hanzo level 3. 
Uh, I'm not going to be able to beat this raid boss because it's a level 10 vampire. 13,920 health. Good times. I made sure to rig that before recording. So you can see you can also spend raid, real money currency to regenerate raid points. Raid points regenerate at a rate of 1 per 30 minutes real time. Battle history is if other players come in and help you. Um, you get to see how much damage they dealt. So let's just fight this raid boss and fail miserably because I'm not going to beat it outright. Let's do a different combo. We're going to do my first mother for Primal Beat Mitochondrial. We're going to put in... Mandrake for death throws, plus 50% damage to the target enemy. And here's the thing. Huapo, I believe, either just resurrected... Or, uh, I should have done this sooner, but Huapo just resurrected and is at 0 HP. However, here's an interesting thing about raid bosses. I'm not going to fill in the party because I'm just going to fail it regardless. You can see in the bottom, it's as slightly hard to read text. You can have spirits participate in battle regardless of their HP. What this actually means is that in raid battles, spirits will be regenerated to full health and will be also resurrected for the duration of the battle. Which is actually really convenient, because then you can use whatever the hell spirits you want. Um, raid battles, what happens is essentially you take on a boss, if you fail it, it opens up to p players on your friends list. And they can all participate. And if when the raid boss goes down, everyone gets credit for killing the boss. Um, everyone gets the base credit. As well, there's also MVP credit and discovery credit. MVP credit is who did the most damage. Discovery credit is who started the raid boss. So in this case, the, pe the person who owns the raid boss is the one who always gets discovery credit. Let's just go in here, we're going to fail hard. <coughs> but this is going to highlight one of the issues I have with the combat system. Which is what happens when the combat system really gets long in the tooth. When it happens for more than that shorter battle. So first of all, let's quickly tap Mendrake, Death Rose, enemy boss. It take takes a slight amount of delay. Get quickly get these battles on the boss. Now one of the tricks I like to do is right when a spirit starts attacking, then activate the, the special ability. Because by doing that, you d because when you activate a special ability, it consumes the action gauge that you can see at the bottom of their character model. It just completely consumes it, so if you do it one second too early, then you will actually waste time. Whereas doing it this way does not waste any time at all. So you do cast Mitochondrial Eve, it performs the attack, the other person performs the attack. You can actually see that the bar is slowly regenerating while all that's happening. And then now Mitochondrial Eve, everyone piles in on the boss, nice combo. And now we're out of SP. And for the rest of this battle, I'm just gonna sit here. I mean, what else can I do? I have to just sit here. If I get lucky, I might get a friend assist. But, like... I'm going to spend the rest of this. I can't do anything. I can't do anything to save the Huapo on the end who's getting absolutely decimated. You can see I get that tap, the backup attack. You have to tap on the screen in order to trigger it. There you go. There, my Huapo gets nuked into oblivion. And now everyone else is taking damage. For the most part, when it comes to bosses, I've noticed that the best strategy is just to beat on the boss. Um, side spirits, it's only worth it if you get um, cert those carob looking things that hold a sphere with the element. If you manage to get one of those in your battle, they will they have an extremely high chance of dropping, and you can use them for fusions, that's about it. Oh. So here you go, wait for this battle to resolve. <sighs> you can see I, I haven't done much, I just tapped the screen once, after I unleashed my combo, I just tapped the screen once and I'm just waiting for the battle to end. Oh, well, there you go, now we're dead. Um, a nice thing about raids too is that battle is that damage sustained from raids does not um, carry over into the rest of the game. So request for help sent to friends. Um, other friends can now, if they <coughs> if they were to go into start mission, they would see that a raid boss is here. Um, if they press fight. Now that there's battle history, you can see the battle history. I participated. I have had one attempt and did that much damage. So other people can come in. They can participate in the raid boss. And you can take it down together. And now I'm going to start giving out verdicts. Because 
on day one without this raid boss feature, I would have called this game really bland. Really. Because the combat system just gets really uninvolved once you blow all your SP on a single target. Once all your SP is gone, you can do nothing but sit on your hands for the most part and just wait for the battle to end. Which I guess is nice if you're like trying to play it while doing something else, but... Eh. This is also gated partially by a paywall. There are only certain spirits you can get. You can actually trade them from other people, but it's dependent on whether or not those people actually want to trade. Um... In terms of pay to win, assuming that they finally decide to balance out some of the pay spirits, it should be okay, I think. Um, if they have anything as broken as Newscaster Kuro in the main, in the live version, though, I'm gonna cry, but cry foul. But still, for the most part, I don't think it's too pay to win. I will say that. Restoring ra the raid token for system, for example, I think that's a little bit crooked. You can also have the ability to revive in the middle of battle for 15 destiny points. Um, that will just revive your entire party and you can continue as is. That is also fairly pay to win because you can just brute force your way through bosses that way by paying more money. Um, but stuff like expanding spirit collection, I wouldn't even call the advanced summon that pay to win. Especially since the regular summon, you saw my first mother. My first mother came from the re regular summon. And stuff like that. So that's not too bad. Um, in terms of suggestions, like, for example, the attack of... You can tell the attack of the Dark Ruler I thing is actually obscuring the battle icon down here. Which is a sort of hilarious, but whatever. Um... Personally, I would say they need to do a bit of touch-up on the load times. The game is only 500-some megabytes in size. It's not that big. It shouldn't take this long to load, I think. Um, you also have the friends list. Communicate. Communicate is mostly just where you set up trades and you accept items that you get. That's about it. Um, so far, I would say that I'm having fun. But... I think it still needs work. Obviously, beta is beta, but it, I think they really need to push it further with a sociability as aspect. Because right now, the only truly sociable feature is is the raid bosses, where you have multiple people pitching in to help you, and you also don't actually screw each other over by doing it. Everyone gets full credit. Everyone gets base credit. Um, the person who created it always gets their credit, and so forth and so on. Um, you can also spin this around. Yeah, I can spin the globe around. My one big concern about this game, though, is that it's a nice game, but shouldn't this be a PlayStation Net? Shouldn't this be like a PlayStation Mobile game? Because the entire thing is touch-driven. The only part of the graphics that could possibly not be rendered on a smartphone is this globe in the center here, and even this, you can just gimp it for PlayStation Mobile. Like, I appreciate that it's a Vita game, but it, it's just, it doesn't really have to be a Vita game. That's the thing about the, the when I look at it, it just, it doesn't have to be on the Vita. Why is it on the Vita? Um, yes, you do get location data, but so do smartphones. So what? So I don't know. Um, let's see here. In terms of battles, I really, really, really want them to give you the ability to do more than blow all your SP at the start and then sit on your hands for the rest of it. you need I, I think the battle system needs to be a little bit more involved. What I will say though is that compared to other free-to-play with paywall games, this one is more reasonable about the way you spend your time. And the reason why I say that is because most of those paywall games, just like, you would only be able to say, do three battles and then pay money to play more battles. That's not the case here. In this game, you can just keep playing more battles the HP amount only regenerates over time, so losing HP persists between battles. But say having more skillful play, leveling your spirits properly, using good combos, that can mitigate the amount of damage you take and allows you to play more based on your skill level, based on the amount of time you've already spent playing the game, instead of some arbitrary limitations set by the, set by the developers. That is nice, that is good, that is ethical, that is the way I prefer to have things done. It is still, of course, a time-dependent game, and you can pay money to get past time. But it is not punishing to be free-to-play, which I like so far. 
I just hope that they curb back all the pay some of the paywall options and just have them be different spirits instead of better spirits. Otherwise, so far, I'm fairly happy with this beta. Um, I hope to play more of this in the future. For the most part, I would say that this is actually a fairly casual game. You, all, you can go pretty darn hardcore. Like, there, I'm just gonna go into ranking here. Who? That guy's probably still a top. Let's see. Yep, still Nora Neko. Obviously, it's Asian because they got the client first. 66 freed areas. Obviously, the guy's Japanese. <laughs> 49 spirits, 50 friends. Oh, man. Yeah. As you can tell, there are no North Americans in this client because of the fact that they actually got their beta like 12 hours after everyone else. You can see a couple of Europeans in there, but obviously, number one's going to be an, an Asian client because they got it first. <laughs> So yeah, so far, fairly good impressions. I think they need to push it further, though. I really, really, really hope they add something like a PvP feature in the future. That would actually be great for this game. Especially since little combos, you could, and it would make stuff like burst combos be more effective instead of just flailing madly at a boss or blowing it all overkill on a small monster. It would be nice to see a PvP feature in the future. Um, I hope that they find more ways to integrate player-to-player -player play. Because the entire concept of this is, is it's supposed to connect Vita users from across the globe. Yet so far, I have not really felt that I'm connected to people. Like, the friends list is kind of just there as a bunch of NPCs, almost. The raid boss sort of does help. Um, but it would help if you actually know the people so you can ask them for help. Although, generally speaking, if you log on the right parts of the day, like if you log on during... If you initiate a raid boss during, say, Japanese prime time and you have a bunch of Asian client friends, generally speaking, you'll have that raid boss down by your down by the by your other friends before you can blink. But still. Overall, TLDR, good so far, needs to push it further, curb back the pay to win, and add more social features. Because this is supposed to be a social game. This is not a single player RPG. This is supposed to be a social game, but so far I would say more so than anything else, the social features are lacking for something like this. Also, it would be nice if they integrated Nier instead of requiring you to log into the client and getting cock blocked by all the um, port issues. So yeah, pretty good. My name has been Vsin. Thanks for watching.